Guess what time it is? It's volunteer time. I need three more folks to come on up. Remember, it'll make you happy. <laughs> the good news is you get help with your issues. Not all of them, because we all have many. Go ahead. All right, come on up. I need two more. Come on up. Thank you. Oh, okay. All right, come on. I was about to call on people. <laughs> come on up. Have a seat. All right. So, everyone in the room circled something on their paper. I want you to write down on your board what your biggest behavioral problem is with your difficult person. And try to write it in like five words or less. <laughs> nice and big on the board, okay? You all, this is whatever you circled. Biggest behavioral challenge for your difficult person. Still writing? It's okay. You can keep writing. Go ahead. All right, hide it. Hide it. <laughs> Don't let them see it yet. We want to build the anticipation, right? That's right. Okay, so we're going to do one, two, three, big reveal. And folks, i got to believe it, okay? I want to see the energy on our counting. Ready? One, two, three. Big reveal. Yay, big reveal. I feel like we should have buzzers and bells and lights. Okay, tell us about what you wrote. You wrote? And by, f and for example. And for example, um, ripping charts out of other coworkers' hands, um, slamming doors. Okay. Uh, huffing and cruffing. Okay. So I want you to erase negative attitude. Okay. Go ahead, erase it. And I want you to write instead, um, ripping charts and slamming doors. Because that's, that's the problem we want to change, right? If you allow yourself to go down the path of negative attitude, you could land, end up landing in that values judgment, which will muddy the waters for this person's ability to hear what the behaviors are that you want her to change. And we could probably list 10 more things, Absolutely. right? But let's just start with these. What do you have over here, Mary Lynn? I have a uh, response to heavy workload. What is the response to the heavy workload? Um, she loses her cool. She, this particular employee, um, kind of shuts down, gets very quiet, mm. and you can see physically the stress building. Okay. What am I seeing? What does she do? Um, I, I see that she kind of focuses in in her own area. She doesn't communicate with the other staff. I, you can almost visualize her blood pressure going up. Okay. <laughs> you were saying blood pressure? I, heard, I thought I heard somebody say blood pressure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so let's erase response to heavy workload, okay? Because guess what? This might not have anything to do with heavy workload. This might have to do with her mama didn't raise her right. We don't know, right? I, we, we see that one plus one. We see that when X happens, you show up in this way. Let's focus on the this way. Because if you go in and say, I want to talk about your response to the heavy workload, you're going to spend your entire time talking about how unfair it is that she has all this work, right? So let's go over here. And, and you told me that she stops communicating, right? So let's write that down. Stops communicating what and to whom? To the other team members. Okay, what kind of information does she, does she stop um, communicating? Yeah. Handoffs, patient updates, wait times. Uh, we're, we're a little different scenario. Okay. We're a laboratory. Okay. Not a medical office. Okay. So, uh, you know, progress, basically. Yeah. Testing progress. Okay. So, stops communicating testing pro process or progress to nurses or to peers or to colleagues, right? How specific is that? Okay. Over here. I had um, aggressive or confrontational. I'm sorry, I keep standing in front of you. And the, um, the and I'm a new manager. Yeah. Um, as well as this new staff. Welcome to the club, Rachel. Give her a round of applause. 
but um, I have an employee who is, uh, like I said, kind of confrontational. So, so she feels that another person on the team isn't doing something the way she would do that, or you know has an issue. She will confront them mm -hmm. in their cube, in mm -hmm. their space, mm -hmm. and you know, in her mind, she's giving them. Uh, feedback, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. In, you know, in her mind. Uh, however, the employee is feeling that she was, uh, you know, aggressive and and, and pushy, mm. and uh, some of them are kind of scared of her. Yeah. So, uh, you know, there's that. But she's also uh, has been very confrontational in regards to the management staff okay. as well. Very difficult to give feedback okay. to her because she's like again sees this as. Um, She's making suggestions and trying to prove things, mm -hmm. and that that her suggestions and ideas are not welcome mm -hmm. because if you don't receive mm -hmm. it well from her, then mm -hmm. you don't want her ideas. Yeah. You don't value them. Yeah. As opposed to the way her delivery. Okay. Yeah, her delivery. My grandmother calls that being a bull in a china closet. Have you heard that expression before? And so her the quality of her interactions with others are problematic whether it's interacting around a concern she has expressing to someone about something they didn't do, what she sees as the right way, whether it's about coming to managers or physicians or leaders, whoever else is in the practice or the site, and expressing concerns or ideas or suggestions. It's the delivery. Is that what I hear you saying? Yes. So let's get really hyper-specific about the problem. So can we turn that into, be into behavior, into a behavior? Um. The preferred behavior would be that if she, that identifying issues is a good thing, okay. identifying process improvements mm -hmm. is a good thing. However, the way to address mm -hmm. those, mm -hmm. you know, it would be to mm -hmm. talk with, you know, her um, mm -hmm. supervisor right. or her manager, right. you know, about those as opposed to confronting other staff. Right. Um, and as far as her behavior within the management team, it would be to be ready to receive, okay. ready to receive. Yeah, so if we think about this in terms of what do you want her to stop doing, right? We've talked about stop and start. I'm gonna give you some help. If we had a little bit more time, I would pull some more of this out so we could all kind of drill down and, and land on this. But what I think you're talking about, and this is probably what I want you to write down, is that her tone and her affect are inappropriate. Okay. Does that work for everybody here? Her tone, and her affect. Everybody knows what affect is, right? What's happening on her face, facial expressions, tone of voice, the volume of her voice, the pacing, the staccato delivery, right? Maybe there's some hand gesturing going on. But we're talking about not that she's aggressive or confrontational. What I want to talk about is what's happening physically and then what the impact is on people of that, right? So these are a very specific, your tone and affect in the interactions you're having with others is inappropriate for a professional office setting. We gotta fix it. And her getting in the space of the person that she's talking with in her uh, personal space. Yes. That's, that's the perception yeah. is very negative. Let's add it to the list, good. So tone and affect are inappropriate and you're creating discomfort, right? With, yes. there's lack of, a res a lack of um, I don't want to say respect because that's not the right work. Awareness. It's a lack of awareness for personal space. Now she has on her board, ready for getting ready for this conversation, tone and affect are inappropriate, lack of awareness of personal space. Are we making a character judgment or are we talking about behavior? Are you more comfortable having a conversation about somebody being aggressive and confrontational, or are you more comfortable having a conversation about tone of voice, affect, and personal space? That's easier to talk about, isn't it? 